time they're up, which will be shortly after Labor Day, yeah. we'll, they'll be functional. And then, and then we're building the, the interactive website and the polling station. So up until about October 7th, when you tap the tag with the QR code, and the only reason why you have a QR code is because all Android phones are NFC capable, Blackberries are, but the iPhone 5, which is coming out in October, will have the NFC capability. So until then, a lot of people have iPhones that aren't capable of accessing NFC, so they have to go to the QR code. The underlying sponsors, um, there'll be more detail as we get the posters up. And they're all, they're all opportunities to augment and uh, benefit the, uh, the members. This one's more for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. So ready around Labor Day. And the idea is to get them up as quickly as possible. I've talked to Tyler about this, but what I'm going to be focusing in with Tyler about is I call it the fulfillment phase. <laughs> volunteers, I know he's mentioned some would be male. I'm prepared to contribute. I got four kids in the 14 to 24 age group, but we got to hone in and figure out a way because the sooner we get them up, the sooner we can incentivize the faction. So we got to focus on what we call the fulfillment phase, which is getting these 5,000 posters in those institutions that will allow us to put them up. I'll talk to Tyler more about it, but he'll come to it down to you. Okay? Yeah. Okay, have a great time, you guys. Let's start. Yeah. Yes, we did. Okay. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, Chris Jai uh, will also be here. He's a producer at uh, Global TV, and he uh, he's our uh, one of our advisors as well. Um, he's just working on trying to get us immediate attention. Um, in your folders, all of you should have received a folder when you uh, came in. Um, in your folders, they're very empty right now because you need to go around to the booths and collect your information. Uh, but there is a pen, there's a business card, so that, that quote on the side there, that's actually a business card if you flip it over. Um, and then there's your passports. And uh, so what you'll do is you'll go around to each of the stations and you'll be getting a stamp at each of the stations for your passport. In order for, uh, at the end, we'll cut that, uh, we'll cut this portion off with your name and email and we'll slip it into the um, ballot bin. And that's what we're going to be drawing from for the door prizes. So you have to go around to all the booths in order to be eligible for a door prize. Okay. Um, it's, it, it, at all of the stations, <coughs> please ask as many questions as you feel necessary. Um, and uh, uh, get as much information today as possible. This is an opportunity for you to do um, a couple of things. One is if you're interested in running as a candidate or if you've already registered as a candidate, this is for you to get all of the information that you need to run your campaign, but also to learn about what it's actually gonna be like to be a youth counselor when you're elected. Second thing is, is if you're in this room and you don't want to uh, get into public service yet, uh, you're not interested in running for youth counselor, but you are interested in getting involved in some way, whether it be volunteering on our admin team, or whether it be um, just joining a committee, we have lots of opportunities to get involved. Um, pretty much anybody who has any type of skill. We have, on our team, we have finance people, uh, uh, students who are interested in finance, students who are interested in graphic design, students who are interested in event planning, um, whatever it is. So we have lots of opportunities, um, and this is, this is for you to, to figure out where you best fit in in the Youth Council. But the Youth Council is for everybody. And if you're an adult in the room, um, this is an opportunity for you to, figure, to find out how you can support Toronto's youth, how you can be involved in the Youth Council, either on our Board of Advisors, or by connecting us with people who um, you might know and who you might feel is a good fit for us to partner with, or um, sponsors that you might know, anything. Um, and so we welcome our adult allies here today as well. Um, throughout the day, um, you'll learn about a lot of things, so I'm not going to go into, into too much detail. Um, but another thing, and I like this group over here, uh, because you guys were networking at the beginning, and I, I honestly, yeah, when I came up to you guys, I thought you guys all knew each other and went to the same school. Um, so that's exactly what we're hoping for today's event. It's a, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, organic. Um, so just, um, you know, in between booths, <coughs> excuse me, um, talk with each other, get to know each other, um, meet, this is an opportunity for you to meet other youth from all across the city. Um, door prizes I talked about. Um, in terms of the stations, so the stations are set up, um, this is station number one uh, called Bright Idea, and this is to um, become a candidate. So this is the first station that you'll probably, that you'll most likely visit, although you can visit them in any order that you want. Um, but this is a station that will tell you kind of how to run as a candidate, what the requirements are. Um, the second booth is at the back there, it's campaign team. Um, and uh, that is, uh, will we'll actually get you to, to find out what it is, what it entails in terms of running a campaign, what the rules are, um, uh, what the policies are. Uh, on the, at the back on this side we have the <coughs> Youth Council structure, so that will actually walk you through the leadership structure of the Youth Council as well as um, the kind of the, the uh, policies and procedures for the Youth Council itself. And then we have um, this booth up here which is Speak Up and it's, it's actually, uh, it might be a good fit for anybody who's in the room who just wants to find out how to volunteer because this booth here will let you know not about what, you know, the campaigning aspect, but about other ways that you can get involved in Toronto, whether it be through the Youth Council, and there's also a couple things that we have on there, so for example, agencies, boards, and commissions, one of the things that we're taking on as a team is we're helping youth apply for agencies, boards, and commissions to the City of Toronto. It has nothing to do with us, we don't actually have any partnerships with uh, that avenue, but we're going to help uh, youth write their applications so that they can get on agencies, boards, and commissions of the city, such as the Toronto Transit Commission, the Public Library Board, um, your local community center board if you want, um, anything like that. So again, there's lots of opportunity, and this is another booth for, for you to uh, um, get involved. And then there's the fifth booth, and that'll just kind of be up at the front here <coughs> with me. Um, 
and uh, it's called Virtual Citizen, and I'll be going over um, what our, unfortunately I don't have any visuals for you today because the app is still under development, but we have an Android and an iPhone app, as well as uh, an online platform that will be released very shortly, and that's what we'll be hosting our election. But also, the most important aspect of Virtual Citizen is um, it, will, it will take you from the election and it will engage you in between the election. Something that does not currently happen uh, at any other level of government um, uh, very well, uh, but something that we're introducing and, and, and calling a virtual citizen so that people can participate in the discussions that the youth councillors are having from the comfort of their home or on the go uh, on their mobile device. Okay. Um, I just want to go over as well just a kind of a brief story. I mean, you guys are all here. How did we get here? Um, a team of us, and NASMA is our director of communications. Um, NASMA and I have been working on this uh, since January of this year. Um, and we are the two original members, and our team has grown, and there's amazing team members. Um, and so we're all doing various aspects, and um, NASMA and I can't take uh, credit for the event or, or anything that has um, kind of transpired. We've been leading it, but really our team has been amazing in meeting with city councilors, getting their support, meeting with the clerk's office to make sure that we have space at City Hall, um, meeting with uh, media uh, to make sure that we have strong media attention in September. Um, we were featured in the Metro. Uh, little things like that that have all come together. and. Really, we are just so passionate about this because we youth need a voice in Toronto. Um, we, we don't have a strong voice right now, and that was prevalent in February, uh, and NASMA was tweeting about this. Do you want to talk about the TTC issue? Uh, so I'm, I guess, one of the youngest. I'm 17, and uh, the biggest problem for me was in February when we were having the TTC problems and, you know, transit city was being brought up. I live in Scarborough. So whoever lives in Scarborough knows that to even get here or even to get anywhere close to downtown, you take three modes of transportation normally, right? So you take your TTC, you take the LRT, and then you take the darn subway. That's exactly what you take. So um, there was a situation where the LRT wanted to be extended to uh, U of T Scarborough. Um, I legitimately live on the same street as U of T Scarborough. Um, during that process, a lot of issues were brought up, but the people who were bringing up those issues were um, elderly citizens or um, people of older age. So people like the youth who didn't want to have a say, they weren't able to. Out of the whole entire that whole entire evening that they were having talks about the budget, only one youth was able to speak. And the only time that she was able to speak was around like I think two o'clock in the morning because it went through uh, the whole entire night. And she was actually talking about not only Trans City but also talking about like library cuts. So that was the only one youth that was able to really say anything because like you know who's going to be there at two o'clock in the morning? Right? Who's going to be able to wait? We all have school the next day. So that kind of like opens up your eyes to see that you know a lot of the issues that are being brought up, there isn't really a youth voice behind it, but we're also affected by it not only today, but tomorrow on tomorrow and later on, because we as we grow older, we're still going to be affected by the same thing, like transit city, um, transit, the transit in general, libraries when we're older for our kids, if we have kids, and situations like that. So I think that this avenue to really get youth to have a say, work with their counselors, um, work with their own communities, their schools, um, is a perfect way to first of all garner that attention when it comes to paying attention what's going on to what's going on in your city, but also at the same time it really builds a community. You know, the more engaged you are at a young age, is more involved you're going to be when you're older, and the more like you know the decisions that you make are going to be smarter because you're going to know when I'm you know voting for someone, what do I look for? Are they the best candidate for me? Should they be running our city, or should they even be running our ward? So it really, it really engages um, all the youth within our city, and I think it's a great opportunity. And I, it's growing faster than I thought it was going to grow, so it's going great. Yeah. A couple more things before we get started, because we want to get you up and active. Um, the candidate list uh, will go up online uh, tonight uh, after this event, but for those of you who do want to know uh, who's running in which wards, we will have that available at the, um, which which booth did I give this yeah, to? This one right here. Yeah, so this booth right here. Um, but and it shows you a visual representation as well. You will see that there's a lot of empty wards um, in kind of downtown Etobicoke. Uh, we are working on that in September, and uh, <laughs> um, we are working on that in September. Uh, part of the reason is because 
uh, if you look at the demo, if you look at the youth population, I don't have that map with me, but if you look at the youth population in that area, it's actually far less than the population in North York and Scarborough. Scarborough actually has one uh, more ward that we need to fill before that quadrant is completely filled, so we're very excited. But this will evolve over time, and as we get more media attention, and as our 5,000 posters, the posters that you see up around the room, there's going to be 5,000 of those out uh, across Toronto in high schools, universities, colleges, whatever. Um, so those are going up. Um, yeah, let's explain. Yeah. Um, here, so the really cool thing about these posters is that we are experimenting some new technology. Uh, well, not really experimenting. We're going to be uh, trying some new technology uh, for the first time in this city. And uh, basically, the posters allow you to tap. Uh, if you have an Android phone, you just simply have to tap the poster. These are actually just mocks, so you're able to just see what they will look like. Uh, but once the posters go live in September, uh, you will be able to tap it, and it will go to our website. After the election, we'll be reprogramming all of the posters, and we know exactly where they are in the city, so that wherever I am, if I'm in, uh, if I'm, Shelly Carroll's here, so if I'm in, in her ward, in Don Valley uh, um, uh, East, then I can, um, uh, uh, if I tap that poster in my high school, it'll automatically tell me who my youth counselor is. So that's how we're using the technology. It's absolutely amazing. It's really cool. Um, if you have a BlackBerry, it also works for a tap. Um, iPhone 5s will be able to uh, have the, the tap technology, but iPhone 4s, you will have to use the, the QR, the QR code, code uh, that's just under the tap button. So this is really cool technology. We're able to reprogram it as many times as we want um, between now and uh, December. Uh, well, beyond that, but in December we're going to be changing the posters. So um, look out for these around your community and around your schools and uh, be excited for them. Yeah, for sure. I think that you should all like, Google the actual system and the program because it's quite interesting. Um, right before you guys get to eat something and go out, and I'll tell you the story behind it because I think it'll be, you guys will be intrigued by it. Um, in Europe, they actually use this technology quite often when they're having elections. So uh, for someone who's running for counselor, you'll be able to pass by their poster, let's say your face, and you'll then pop up on your phone all about them. So what, with the description of like, you know, their biography, what they want to do. So it's really interesting and I think that uh, bringing it to, you know, slowly coming into North America and um, this is a really great way for the city to be more advanced when it comes to technology. So. We're trying to be leaders in that. Um, the final thing that I want to say is uh, I just want to recognize our sponsors, our partners, and our supporters. Um, so our, uh, I'll start off with our supporters. Um, today we have the Toronto City Clerk's Office helping us out. So any space in the City of Toronto, for example, this is all free um, and partially thanks to uh, City Councilor Shelley Carroll um, because she's our sponsor for that. Um, Toronto Elections, uh, we are partnered with them and, and so they provide us with ongoing advice as to our elections. Um, and they're also monitoring our elections very closely to find out how we do the online voting and how we do all of this um, poster um, technology. We uh, are partnered with Toronto Facilities, again, uh, help us get this space. Um, the, the clerk's office is actually working with us as well on um, the, the council chambers and making sure that we can use the full uh, system in council chambers as well as all the cameras and everything like that um, for our first youth council meeting. Um, and then we also have the support of the mayor's office and uh, city councillors. Um, a majority of the councillors in Toronto, we're still, our uh, public affairs team is still meeting with them uh, ongoing, on an ongoing basis. Um, our partners, we are partnered uh, with TEDx Youth Toronto and uh, we will be co-hosting an event with them in, on November 17th. Um, they will be, that's when they have their main event and we will be hosting a satellite event at City Hall. Um, our sponsors, we have uh, four sponsors on board uh, currently and they're, they're shown on our posters. We have Tap Me Tags and so they're um, helping us with the 5,000 posters. We have Shine at Home, we have Home Smart Savings, and we have Cabbage Town Classical Youth Choir. So that's what we have so far. Um, we are trying to, in terms of um, what, what, what we try and do in terms of our sponsors is um, we, we try and uh, go as organically as possible. Um, we're trying not to go after government funding because that comes and goes. Um, so we're really trying to build a sustainable model for the youth council so that we're here no matter what happens uh, within the city finances, within the provincial finances or anything like that. Um, so just to give you a, a brief overview of, of kind of how that works. and. Um, I think that's I think that's it. So there is food at the back, and um, you can start going to your booths, and you can start having food. Uh, and thanks again for coming. We'll talk to you again at three. I think everyone's going to go. Let's 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 go.
start on March 1st and we're going to have it first. So we actually started, um, well, we put up a high which is the Kama Academy from starting on March 1st. After that, and the camp speech to become a youth counselor goes from March 1st to October 1st. Okay, so let's see. To become a camp, it's very easy. Go online, fill up a form, and you have to get 20 uh, sponsors. To, you know, if you go online, it's very easy. So let's say that you become a candidate and then now you have to do a campaign to make sure you're elected in your ward. Okay? The election campaign is I think in October 19th. That's year. So is this, is this was just discussed? So let's say when you run for the year, you get chosen as one of the youth counselors, then for two years you are the youth counselor for that ward. For example, let's say you run for ward one and you get elected as youth counselor for ward one. So basically we have youth counselors for up to 444. So we have different students for each of the three different wards. Okay? If you look at the RH thing, they are the youth ambassadors. You guys know what that is? No. Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. So youth ambassadors basically they are from the organization. For example, UFT, they have an organization for youth. Correct? So we they might they would also run to become a youth ambassador. So these are these things are youth ambassadors, they're based on organization. The difference between youth ambassadors and youth counselors is how they get chosen. Youth counselors they get chosen by their peers, whereas youth ambassadors they get chosen by the organization. They get involved in it. You got it? You guys have any questions, let me know. And here is basically like for example, I'm the youth council lady. Here is the PA and here is the youth council council chainer. Here is all the executives, the chair and the vice chair, and the media. So what you guys do is, let's say after you get chosen as a youth counselor, you bring in issues from your ward. So let's say you know in your ward you have an issue, someone brought up the issue. So you have to say, this is my uh, meeting. This meeting happens every Saturday, not every Saturday, so once a month on a Saturday. And it's an eight hour meeting. Okay, I know it seems long to get food, but it's good. You know, it's just once, uh, once, a, once a month. Okay? Sorry, what is it? Once a month? Once a month Saturday. Okay. So you come here, you bring on any issues that your ward has, and then we have to make a decision, or we think, okay, what can we do to improve this? You know? So this one actually gives you guys an opportunity to bring on issues to the community. Because as you know, you don't get to vote. You don't get to say anything. It's still Toronto. What is happening in Toronto? You know? So from here, what we can do is we can actually take up the issue that was brought here to a counselor. You know what I'm trying to say? So that is how. Even though you're not getting a vote directly, you get to do it indirectly by bringing the issues here. Okay. Okay. Anyway, actually, what happens? Who's the chair? Okay. The chair, what happens is, okay, you know, longer how you guys get chosen? A youth counselor, 44 youth counselor, 60 youth ambassador gets chosen, right? After that, when you guys come to your first meeting, I think that will be on October 27th, right? Because October 19th will be the deadline to, October 19th will be the deadline uh, where you guys get to the election. And then uh, October 27th will be the first meeting where the chosen youth counselors will come to the meeting. In there, you guys will have, you have to choose who is the chair and who is the vice chair. Oh, so it's going to be... It's going to be, be, be out of the city of council. Yes. Okay. City of council or the ambassador. Right. Okay. Here's my uh, contact information. That's the, uh, the organization that I founded. If you want more information on this. That's nice. And anything like that, or if you wanted to volunteer like as a part of our organization, anything else that interests you, like you said, you wrote a story, we need journalists, we need reporters. So for more experience and for more portfolio material, you can always be a journalist with us. Yeah, so check out the website, lots more information on there. Awesome. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, is this the site? Is this the one about virtual citizen? I touch on it, yes. Uh, if you to get more in depth with it, you'll talk to Tyler, but I can tell you the gist of it for sure. So essentially, Virtual Citizen is our online platform. It kind of started almost as a Facebook app, and then it got much, much bigger. It turned into our own platform. It specialized for us and what we do. We needed it for civic engagement, basically. It's the first of its kind. It's really neat. So you sign up, you make a profile for whatever you're interested in being involved with the committee is, like if you want to be a counselor or if you're just a volunteer, whatever. You can do anything from start to sign a petition. You start your, your express your issues. You can uh, talk to your counselor, talk to other kids within your area, anything like that. So it's really neat. And then the more that you do on Virtual Citizen, like you earn money and that kind of thing that you spend within the, the, the online world. And then the more you do, the more 
actual offline action that you can create and be a bigger part of, especially if you're a counselor. So the more that you put more time you put into it, the more involved you are with the people that are online, because this is also how we're doing our voting. All this voting is online. So you got to get on there. If you want to run, start your profile. Is this virtual system, or do you know when it would be online? It will be soon. It's still under developing. We're okay. just taking out all the kinks and then we're launching it, yes. And that's when we start our profile. Yes. Yeah. So then you're going to want to get all your friends involved, get them to sign up and vote for you, and get them involved. And it's only for people ages 24, or sorry, 14 to 22. And we're being very, very strict about it. We ask for personal information to safeguard you guys, essentially. We don't want just anybody joining. It's strictly youth in Toronto that are on this platform, and that is it. That's it. So it's really neat. And you can also join committees. We have like the Arts and Culture Committee. We have the TTC. We have libraries. Anything like that. And it's all on the website. I'm sure you guys have checked it out. So you can also send us an email and sign up for that. Do those committees uh, start once uh, the elections are over? Uh, they've kind of already started, but yeah, they'll be they'll actually be working once the elections start taking place and once they're over, yes. And then that's I think when it was over. added to the Google Plus page of the group, but I didn't know where to contact or where to go. If you go to the website and look around, it's on the website. Yeah, it's, since we're still new and this is our first election, we're still trying to work all that out right now. Okay. But yeah, everything's on the website, definitely. All the contact information. And contact Tyler for anything that you're fuzzy about. Okay? All right. Any other questions? Cunningham, how did you get involved? Well, I just moved to Toronto about two years ago and I found the CYC. They were brand new, starting looking for volunteers to help with their admin team. I'm a media relations coordinator, which was the experience that I was looking for. It's what I went to school for. I'm a public relations professional. So I figured this is a great avenue and I feel very strongly about the fact that youth are our future and they need to be heard. And this is the way to help do it. And I am so proud to be part of the spearheading committee to do it. So you're running a station here, yes. and it's a little bit more than um, the youth council. This is about how else, how yeah. others can get involved. Yeah. So say you don't want to be a direct part of the youth council, or you don't want to run to be a youth counselor, uh, you could join us on Virtual Citizen as an online platform that we'll be launching soon. Where essentially anything that you do offline can be translated into offline action. So if you start a petition on Virtual Citizen. It'll make its way to the youth counselor. If you have an issue, you can talk to your youth counselor through this. And then the more that you do on it, the more involved you can actually be. We also have tons of committees that you can sit on. We have arts and culture. We have area committees like Etobicoke, North York, uh, Scarborough. So just because you don't live right in Toronto, that's okay. We we want to help out. So essentially, that's that's how it happened. So the website uh, until you actually launch the app, the website is CYC. The CYC.ca. The CYC.ca. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you. And we look forward to everything working out. Yes, thank you very much. What station are we at? We're at Becoming a Candidate. Now, before we start, how did you get involved? I got involved because I was looking to represent, kind of enhance my resume. Sure. Yeah, okay. and I heard about the CYC. It was a new youth voice that started in January, and I think I heard of it online. And then I spoke with Tyler, Tyler who is the head of pretty much the start of this organization, and he told me that there's an opening for media relations, and I am the manager of media relations. But now you actually like this. It's not just something on your resume. You're actually really involved in this. You, yes. you seem enthusiastic. Technically, I would run for one of these wards, but I can't because I don't go to school in this ward and I don't live. I live in Richmond Hill, so I'm not eligible to run for a candidacy. But I, this is the best I can represent this organization. So here's why I'm doing it. Great. So for the people who don't live in Richmond Hill, who live yes. in Toronto, um, what do they need to know? They need to know that if you want to become a candidate, you have to be between the age of 14 and 22. 
technically the cutoff age is 24, but since it's a two-year commitment, we want you to be within that age bracket. What should their birthday be on on in 22? Oh, there's a little math, but you want to be. Um, I think it's January, like January 1st is, I'm not sure the technical date. Okay, so, well, yes. Um, so secondly, if you're under the age of 18, you will need parental consent because it is a two-year commitment. You will be meeting monthly at City Hall to discuss if you are uh, the counselor. The ward you are eligible for, that's the second important thing you need to know, is that the ward you live in and the ward you go to school in. So those are the two things. We have an app here that can, if you write in your address or your school's address, it'll tell you the ward that you're eligible for. And that is the eligibility requirement. Your first, One or the other? Uh, yes. Uh, the first task as becoming a candidate is to go online to thecyc.ca. Under there, you'll at the top banner, you'll see registration. And your first task is to, you'll be given a link after you register called your registration ID. You need to send this unique ID that's unique to you to 20 people that will say you have your, their endorsement. Right. So 20 people need to click, click on this link before you are on the ballot. It's like an electronic updated version of the nomination form yes. and supporters yes. and... Okay. So that is more about becoming a candidate. And where can they be? Can they be anywhere in the city of Toronto? Yes. Alright. Okay, so the candidate, the potential candidate has done that. They've sent it out to 20 people. They get, People clicked on it. Next step will be running the campaign, which will be that. Okay. Uh, first, what more do you want to run for? Here is so far, um, green represents two candidates, yellow is one candidate, and red, magenta is two candidates. So basically, if you were to represent a perhaps a less, you know, a more favorable award for your election. So just just keep that in mind. Sure. So, uh, so there's quite a few white spots uh, yes. at the moment. Yes. That's bound to change. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully change. Um, what else should someone know? Like if rather than running in Scarborough, maybe they live over here and they should run over there, for example. So first thing you have to know that the wars are grouped into uh, Etobicoke, uh, East York, uh, North York, and Scarborough. So even though you uh, represent your own ward, sometimes you might have complaints that is unique to your own locality. Right. right. So if, if you're in the boundaries between, let's say, uh, Scarborough and North York, maybe you want to maybe you want to represent more Scarborough than you would run for the Scarborough over there. Yes. So it's a little bit of strategy and yes. for for a second. Strategy plus you want to know who you're representing. You have more friends. You have more opinions about a certain ward. Even though it's harder, you will want to run for that ward because it's all about representation. Um, how have? Okay. Well, Derek, thank you very much. Thank you. Your campaign is probably, I think it's about eight weeks. So um, really, you're going to have, in those eight weeks, right now campaigns are slowly getting started. Who has a Facebook page already? Okay, only a couple of you. Who has a uh, website up already? Okay, and we've given you more links today so you can create free websites. So this is your opportunity, and, and really, you, uh, we, we interact online, right? So a lot of your campaign is going to be online. What we're committing to do from an organizational standpoint is uh, when you create your video and when you create your, your uh, postcard, we will post that up on our Facebook page to help get you attention, but really it's you. And if you're still in high school, if you're in university, then you have a whole bunch of people right in your own school or university <coughs> to reach out to before you even reach out to the rest of your entire board. Um, and the other thing uh, that um, they both mentioned is the assistants in the office and how, how uh, important of a role they play. And the reason we're asking you to start your campaign teams and have positions is because that will allow you to start, <coughs> excuse me, to start building your team. I'm an assistant at the Toronto District School Board. And I started as like, I'm an assistant, yay, uh, this is so cool. I get to work with politicians. I get to help make decisions uh, and help, help you know, create the, the bills uh, that go forward to the, the school board, the policies. Um, but it became more than that. It became, um, and, and, you know, and I, when I first started, I was like, oh, this is my boss. Um, and I worked for Chris Bolton at the time, and he's now the chair. Um, and, you know, but it became more of, oh, I work with Chris Bolton. I'm his assistant. I help him. I help his constituents. And that's what it, it'll become for you as well, is you need to build a team of people that are behind you so that after the election, when you 
are elected as a youth counselor, that you have a team to continue helping you. Sure, you're not paid full time, but that's all the more reason why you need a team behind you to help you in pushing your issues and reaching out into your communities. Um, a couple things that I, I uh, want to mention is um, we will be doing the raffle very shortly, but we are going to open up the booths for those of you who may have been um, new coming in. Um, and uh, there is <laughs> still food at the back, so help yourself. Um, but uh, we will be starting the raffle, and we will also have an opportunity at the end to uh, just ask questions from the audience if you have any questions. Okay? <laughs> works like Facebook, so it's a social network, you'll enter in your profile details, you'll upload a photo if you want, um, and basically that's how you will vote, but that's also how you will participate in discussions, that's how you push issues, um, if, you're, if you're not running for youth counselor but you have a youth counselor come October, um, then you'll be, um, uh, that's how you'll also interact with your youth counselor and get to know them. Um, we also then have two mobile applications, and those mobile applications are on Android and iOS, so iPad and iPhone. Unfortunately, we do not have a BlackBerry um, yet, and that's just because we're on a limited budget. Um, and all of those will tie in with our other system as well. So again, that's how you push your issues, um, so that you can do it either online at home or you can do it on the go. So if you're, you know, in the TTC and it's taking forever, and you know you have an idea, just come to you, uh, an epiphany of how you can um, uh, uh, make change. Um, or what you want to change in your in your neighborhood, then you can just quickly um, enter into the app, and it will come to us, and we will put it on the youth council agenda. Um, the youth council agendas will be very long. That's why they're, they're eight-hour meetings, but um, they'll be very fulfilling, and there'll be a lot of discussions um, to be had. Also, in the apps, you'll also be able to see who your candidates are in your ward, and once the youth council is elected, you'll be able to see who the youth councilor is for your area. Okay. Um, does anybody not have one of these yet? Okay.